Knowing who you are is the antidote to it. Someone once said, you wouldn't be so concerned about what other people thought of you if you realized how seldom they do. <laughs> and it's so true. But there is someone who thinks about you constantly, someone who, who loves you and adores you, and you are always on his mind. You know, sadly, I think very few of us have a deep revelation of God's love for us. I mean, it's there. We know it intellectually. We believe it. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. We know it. But it's not a revelation to us. We don't experience it. So guess what? It doesn't benefit us the way it should. Look, we, we all fall short of God's ideal for us, don't we? Of course. Yet God has mercy on us. In Romans 3.22, he says, We are justified freely by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In other words, he will freely pardon, says Isaiah 55. In Christ, God shouts out this divine verdict from the heavenlies, not guilty. I, I love that image. I guess because I played a lawyer on TV for five years, I love legal analogies. So I love this picture of God in the courtroom of heaven, and when the accuser of the brethren comes, Satan, old slewfoot, or when our own accusing thoughts come, he stands right up and he says, uh-uh, not guilty, he's mine. Not guilty, she's my delight. So I, I love that. And if you're like me, this is, a, this is a love that we have a hard time getting because it's a love we don't deserve and we could certainly never earn. But then if, if we could, it wouldn't be free, would it? But again, if you're like me, this is how I respond. Continuing the legal analogy, this is what I would do. But I, I object. No, you're, I object. I, 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 my heart's so cold right now. I don't, I don't feel you. I, frankly, I'm pretty disappointed in you, God. You haven't come through for me the way I wanted to. I don't know if I can really trust you. And his answer is, that's not a requirement. My love has no conditions. I love you freely. But we still say, but I, I object. I, I fail again and again and again. I don't deserve your forgiveness. He says, of course you don't. But my grace through my son is free to all, without merit on you, your part and without reservation on mine. I love you freely. God. But I, I object. Look at my past. Look at my history, where I've come from. I've, I'm too messed up. He says, the offer stands. I will love you freely with an everlasting love. And with such assurances, he both breaks and melts our hearts, doesn't he? It's, it's, it's just he, he, he smothers all of our doubts and he... And he, and he stifles every objection with the warmth of his embrace. This is a love that confounds our ability to really try to grasp it. Yet God wants us to get it. So much so that he inspired the Apostle Paul to write a prayer in Ephesus, to the church at Ephesus, and to all of us in the church down through the ages. I love this prayer in Ephesians 3, starting in 16. And, you know, if I'd been Paul, I would have prayed a very different prayer. I would have prayed for the church to have power and do miracles and to exercise authority over Satan, but he didn't. Instead, he prayed for them to be rooted deep in God's love. I think he knew that was the starting point. That was the foundation. That was the place from which everything else was going to grow. Power and victory and spiritual authority and maturity and walking in the fullness of our identity are all based on being secure in the fact that God loves us. So as Paul prayed for that church, I pray also that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how long and wide and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. God went to all lengths to redeem you. He stretched through time and space to reach out to you, and he sent his own son to free you. From the most exalted position in the universe, from the uppermost, outermost limits, he did what no one had ever done before. He set aside his glory, and he slipped into skin. He bent down to touch you and to call you by name. And on that cross, he spread his arms wide to embrace you, accept you, and include you. In love, he extends kindness and mercy, even loving reproach. He picks us up to get us back on track. He chases us to protect us from harm. He pursues us to draw us close to him and lavish us with his love. And it was that father's pursuing love for me decades ago that 
drew and drew, brought that, this prodigal daughter straight back home again into his arms. And I'm struck. You know, I always thought all those years I was pursuing God to find him through the world religions. I thought I was the one chasing hard after God and the whole time he was running after me. And he still is. He's running after you too. And he wants to take you to a place where you'll open your heart and you can experience even more of him to become more fully that unique, incredible, one-of-a-kind individual that he designed for you to be.